WSU's cleaning up after the October storm. And we've got total coverage on this edition of ATV News. We'll show you how snow caused a house fire. And they had, had not started to evacuate when we got here yet. Why a smoke-filled Home Depot stayed open. I came back in just big, bold lettering. It just said anxiety disorder. USU basketball star Jalen Moore talked about his struggles with anxiety. We'll tell you how he can inspire you. There was enough snow to make one of these. Make your guesses now on totals, and I'll tell you just how much snow we got in weather. If no Aggie football has you zoning out in sports, I'll show you how Aggies still made it to the red zone this week. All that and more, this is ATV News. We're just trying to make it so it's safe for everybody. Structure fire 457 East, 1000 North. We don't want to get anybody hurt by live power. There's so many people that are willing to help lend a hand. It's amazing. It was snow in October in Cache Valley yesterday as the first storm of the season swept through, making its mark on trees and on cars. Welcome to ATV News. I'm Faititi Toileta. And I'm Sarah Murphy. Students and staff are still readjusting their schedules after USU canceled all morning classes yesterday. I learned why USU made this decision and how students felt about it. The ripping of chainsaws, cleaning up of branches, and sounds of engines from heavy machines filled campus yesterday as a snowstorm swept through Cache Valley. We got a freak storm. Uh, it wasn't expected to be this much. I think we've had like, what, maybe a week of fall? Yeah. <laughs> now we have <laughs> freaking Christmas now. But with facilities workers sawing tree limbs and picking up the damage. We had decisions being made about whether or not to cancel classes or delay them. And then we also had cleanup crews. We're just trying to get all the tree limbs up and everything. It's unsafe for everybody. The rest of campus was pretty empty. For the first time in four years, administration canceled morning classes because of weather. The power is out in most of Logan, and they canceled class until noon so far. This is the South Campus Express on Aggie Shuttle. Now, this bus, along with the other shuttles, have been running all day. So why haven't classes? The main reason we canceled the classes was because of the danger to students and employees as they were, would be walking around campus. We're just trying to make it so it's safe for everybody. A decision some students weren't against. Oh, I was so excited. I rolled over and went, went back, back to, to bed. bed. <laughs> With the final branches being tossed and facilities workers wrapping up. Staff members say things are looking good for the coming change of weather. As long as everybody can just be safe, um, be careful in their cars, be careful while they're walking around, I think we should be fine. Power outages, damage to cars, and fallen branches was the scene after nearly a foot of snowfall in Logan Tuesday morning. Branches came down from the weight of the snow, blocking people in. Others cleared debris from their yards early Tuesday morning. Utility workers fixed lines all over the valley to repair damages by the falling trees. Some residents of the area said they were woken up by the fallen trees as early as 5 a.m. The snowstorm also caused power outages throughout the state. Utility workers fixed damaged lines throughout the day to bring power back to Cache Valley. This map shows the number of people without power in Utah Tuesday morning between 6 and 7 a.m. The majority, nearly 8,000, were in or around Cache Valley. Now, this is what the state looked like later, around 5 p.m. Tuesday evening. Cache Valley was down to 660 people without power. As of today, around noon, only seven people were affected by power outages here in Cache Valley. Branches covered the streets early Tuesday morning that led to some roads being blocked off. It was going so good. There's so many people that are willing to help lend a hand. 
It's amazing. Logan City workers used chainsaws to cut large fallen trees into pieces and backhoes came to help clear the streets. Logan residents were out early to clear branches and debris from their yards and some were lucky enough to have help from their neighbors. On campus, Utah State facilities workers were busy clearing sidewalks and getting rid of large branches most of Tuesday morning trying to get campus ready for students to resume classes later that day. Fallen trees and power lines damaged homes as well as vehicles during the storm. Firefighters say a fallen live power line caused a fire behind a Logan Homes garage around 8.30 Tuesday morning. With this heavy snowstorm, that we've had. There are a lot of limbs that are down, a lot of power lines that are down. Fortunately for the homeowners, firefighters arrived quickly and the fire did minimal damage to the home. And Cache Valley wasn't the only place that was hit with precipitation. Leah Crescioni joins us live from the quad to give us the statewide weather stats from the storm. Leah? That's right, we got some snow here in Cache Valley. And as you can see behind me, the quad is pretty much covered in snow. So much so that we even got some snowmen hanging around back there. That's fun. Take a look at this beautiful drone shot of campus. We got a lot of snow yesterday. The National Weather Service says we got about 11.5 inches of snow, and that was just in Logan. While this wasn't a record, it was pretty uncommon. Utah usually sees about one to two inches of precipitation in October, and every three to four years, some snow arrives, and this was one of those years. Now, Salt Lake City did not see any snow yesterday, but Solitude Mountain in Big Cottonwood Canyon got 11 inches, and Park City got 3.3. I'll have more details on the storm and what you can expect in the next days coming up in weather. Reporting live from the quad, Lee Crescioni, ATV News. Back to Thanks. you at the desk. Thanks, Leah. Power outages led to all morning classes being canceled at the Logan Institute Tuesday. Students were turned away by locked doors with all classes until 4 p.m. canceled, which meant some volunteer services were canceled as well. We're a part of the committee that tries to feed people sometimes on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and usually on Tuesdays like it's packed like we're gone there's no more food within 30 minutes whenever we feed people and we we plan to feed over 2,000 people. All classes resumed earlier this morning. The power outage also shut down schools in the Cache County School District. Schools like Ridgeline High School didn't have power Tuesday morning forcing the district to cancel school for the day. Along with Ridgeline High, Spring Creek Middle, Mountainside Elementary, and Wellsville Elementary were also canceled because there was no power in any of the buildings. All of the Cache County schools had two-hour delayed starts. But today, the power is back and all Cache County schools are open and following their regular schedule. And with the power down in messy streets, stress levels were high, but these students found a way to chill out. Their power was down at home, and when they came to school, their classes were canceled. They said they didn't want to go home to a dark apartment, so they stayed on campus to enjoy playing in the snow. Now, they say Utah snow is normally a powder, but here they wanted to take advantage of this snowfall. This snow, it's incredibly sticky. Like, you pick it up, and it all just comes up in a clump. It doesn't, like, powder out or anything. So it's honestly ideal for making a snowman. Now the building, it wasn't just limited to snowman. You can even so find some other snow creatures out around campus. The tools you can buy from Home Depot today won't smell smoky like they might have last Thursday. Logan firefighters opened the rooftop vents of Home Depot early Thursday morning to let out the smoke that filled the building. Logan Fire says the smoke came from a trash compactor fire next to the building. The fire alarm did not go off, so crews tripped it to get people to evacuate the building. I think we were pretty timely in getting uh, our evacuation started and completed. Humphrey says they were able to get all the smoke out and put out the fire, making it safe for customers to go back in. 
and Smith's Marketplace on Main Street is still closed today. The Logan Fire Department responded to a roof fire caused by a burning HVAC unit last night. After putting the flames out, the fire department used fans to blow air into the store to clear out the smoke. Once the smoke's out of the building, we can go in, evaluate the roof structure, and make sure the building's safe before we turn the building back over. Switching out their masks and oxygen tanks, teams rotated going in and out of the store to monitor the smoke clearing. No one was hurt and everyone was able to evacuate safely. A teenage boy is in stable condition today after being stabbed at Willow Park. Logan police responded to a dispute near the batting cages last Wednesday night at the park. Police say it was reported someone was shot, but arriving at the scene, police say the victim had stab wounds. He was taken to Logan Regional Hospital, located the male suspect's car, and they say they took him into custody. So World Mental Health Day was on Sunday, but here at USU, we celebrated it on campus on Monday earlier this week. Mm -hmm. And Leah Crescioni is going to take us to the event that USU held about how they recognized World Mental Health Day. Dogs from the Humane Society were on the quad to help students ease their stress and anxiety. They can kind of understand you in a way that people don't, um, and sh you don't have to talk to them. They're just easy to get along with, and they love you unconditionally, so it's great for your mental health. Research has shown that playing with animals can reduce loneliness and increase feelings of social support. She's honestly my best friend. Like anytime I'm sad, she just knows exactly how to comfort me. The National Institute of Mental Health says that one in five adults have a mental illness. But they also say that even if you're struggling mentally, it doesn't define you. People have anxiety, depression, PTSD, whatever mental health issue they could have but you can still be successful. Jalen Moore for three. Moore is a former USU and NBA basketball player who made the decision to quit playing basketball because of his anxiety. Toughest call in my life was, was when I had to actually call Milwaukee and tell them and dis, you know, discuss with them what, what can I do next. I couldn't play in the NBA, but at the end I ended up being able to tell people my story. My condition was determined as severe anxiety. President Cockett and Moore spoke at the Eccles Conference Center about their personal mental health struggles. I am ever thankful that my family and friends talked to me, acknowledging that something was wrong and made me take action. I'm so glad USU has participated in the Mental Health Day. Thea Crescioni, ATV News. You can find a link to mental health resources on our Facebook page. And coming up. Hey you, I'll show you what the drought has to do with the hay. More specifically, what you eat that eats the hay and what you might notice when you buy a hamburger. The store's closed at this time. We'll show you why Smith's Marketplace is shut down today. Coming up in weather, Leah Crescioni will have the seven day forecast. The current temperature is 45 degrees. Today, one out of every four American kids is Hispanic. That means many of the future doctors who will care for us, the engineers who will build our cities, the scientists and entrepreneurs of our country can be your kids. We all know how hard it is for you to send them to college. This is why we want you to know you are not alone. And every day more people support you to make it happen. Many support you. And the Hispanic Scholarship Fund helps you prepare, plan, and pay for your kid's college education. HSF.net. You sure you don't want some? It's chamomile. Lisa, you are extremely terrifying. Just the scariest undead subhuman thing on TV. And I really mean that. <laughs> but I am worried that you could give my kids nightmares if they see you. So... I'm gonna have to block you. <sighs> so that's it. Oh, and, and tell the zombies they're they're blocked too. <sighs>
Oh, look at how cute this snowman is. Thank you, Carson, for sending this in. And, oh, is that a tree that fell onto a car? That sucks. Um, thank you, JD, for that. All right, now, oh, there's another one. Look at that. Um, thank you, Tessa, for this. Look at that. So much damage from this storm. All right, let's take a look at the national forecast. So up here, we got some green going on. And what that green means is there is a lot of precipitation happening. So all of that is going to be very wet, moving around the country. So we got some up here in the north, going around to the east, some in the south over there. Um, now let's take a closer look at Utah. So Utah, we've got also some of that um, gray and green precipitation, but it also is going to get a little bit icy. So we're going to see some snow happening, and it's going to be moving down the state. So let's take a look at the seven-day forecast now. Oh, I should be over here. Sorry. <laughs> so let's take, so on uh, tomorrow, it's going to be 45 and with a low of 28. It's going to be in like the 40s, getting up, ooh, even to the 50s and 60s as we move forward with the week. On Thursday, there's going to be a 20% chance of snow. And the low for Thursday is going to be 24. It's a little bit frigid out there. But as we move across the week, we're going to get a little bit sunnier, a little bit higher temperatures, um, at least during the day. During the night, we're still going to be a little, a little bit chilly. So I would recommend you have all your winter gear, your coats, your boots, all that stuff. It's getting a little cold out here, Cache Valley. Um, and you are all caught up on weather. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Leah. Your bowl of cereal could be costing you more. So could your next hamburger. Yvonne Bass tells us how the drought is making milk and meat more expensive to produce. Irrigation water stopped flowing months before the growing season was over. Farmers say they stopped early because of the drought. We would have had at least another good crop of hay uh, if we had the water to provide for it. Though the summer heat is over, the drought is still affecting you and me. This hay last year was a nutrient-dense alfalfa. This year, the farmer decided to replace it with a crop that could handle the drought a little better, forage grain. And it still produced one-third of what the alfalfa grew last year. Livestock owners say that pushed up hay prices, which pushed up beef prices. You can probably see this in your grocery store. The live animals are selling for less, and they are costing more to feed. They're not bringing as much money for the calves, and so the farmer's taking it. Another effect that Bass noticed was fish in his irrigation pipes. The reservoir that went to a depth that wouldn't even support the fish that were in it, the fish came down the creek, came down into the pipes, uh, where they were seeking the very last refuges of water, and uh, most of them did not survive. Bass says, it is having more and more people in a landlocked desert state where droughts are natural and expected. The only thing we can do as far as the drought is concerned is conserve water. Yvonne Bass, ATV News. Drought.gov says Utah is still under extreme and exceptional drought conditions, which you can see on the drought map behind me. Now, even with the snow Logan got Tuesday, climatologists say we're still in these extreme drought conditions. Utah is ranked 31st out of the states for percent fully vaccinated. 53.5% of Utahns have been fully vaccinated with 59.7% having received one dose. In the Bear River Health District, which contains Cache, Box Elder, and Rich Counties, 46.9% have gotten both doses with 53.4% having received one dose. Now for an update on the number of COVID cases in Utah. There have been almost 10,000 new cases in the state since last week, with almost, tw almost 23,000 active hospitalizations. There have been more than half a million total. In Bear River Health District, which contains Cash, Box Elder, and Rich Counties, there have been 744 new cases since last week, with more than 1,000 active hospitalizations. There have been almost 30,000 total. At USU, there have been 49 new cases since last week with 83 active cases. 
there have been nearly 4,000 total. And coming up. I'm sorry I had to give mine away when I moved here. Residents at Cache Valley Living Assistance Center had some furry visitors over the weekend. We'll show you why the event ended in tears. The surplus store. Someone's trash is about to be my treasure. We have cords and cables here. We have bags full of towels and sheets. Do you want this fold-up mattress? Because we don't. We got keyboards, paint cans, whatever this is, typewriters, computer monitors. It's destiny on the line, and we want you at Surplus. Products are not guaranteed to work. All sales are final. This commercial is not endorsed by Utah State. Butterfingers, that's what Green Canyon and Skyview football players heard all night at their Friday night game. We got snow this week, but for the game, it was pouring rain, making the ball slick and pretty hard to hold on to. Passes were dropped on both sides, like this pass from Green Canyon quarterback Jack Stevens to wide receiver Caden Stewart. Or there's this one from Bobcats quarterback Garrett Zollinger to Davis Hall. The ball even managed to slip from Steven's hands once, but he quickly recovered his own fumble. Good Grips still won out in a few plays, including this rushing touchdown by Gavin Christiansen. Zollinger eventually found the hands of Hall with this touchdown pass. And Stevens also found Hall with an interception intended for Kyle Baker. Zollinger added number 8 Kimball Jackson and number 11 Brighton Williams to his list of touchdown passes as well, bringing the final score to 20-7 for the Bobcats. Welcome to this very rainy edition of ATV Sports. I'm Emma Fates. Women's soccer took on Fresno State on Bell Field Friday. It was a rainy game, but that didn't stop senior midfielder Cami Warner. Um, Fres she didn't get this one, but freshman forward Busy Arevalo scored her first goal of the season just minutes later. The Aggies ended up losing to Fresno State 2-1. Soccer also took on San Jose State this week. The game was tight, with both teams failing to score any goals in the regulation time. But junior forward Sarah Taylor scored this goal in overtime. The Aggies' losing streak did not last as they closed out the, this game 1-0. This brings the Aggies' overall record to 10-4-1. Soccer wasn't the only soak sport in Logan this week. One, two, three, Aggies! Cross Country started it off with a cheer at the Steve T. Memorial Invitational. The women's team took first overall and the men's team took second by only one point to the first overall College of Idaho. The Aggies were led by senior Leanne Larkin-Hatch, who took second in the women's 5K. Men's tennis competed in a three-day Utah Invitational in Salt Lake last week. They competed against Utah, Weber State, Idaho State, Montana, and Montana State. The Aggies went 10 and 14 in doubles and 11 and 13 in singles. Women's volleyball was also on the road this week. Their first stop was in New Mexico on Thursday, where they took on the Lobos. They lost 3-2, but had a quick turnaround Saturday against Air Force. Number 8, junior blocker Kennedy Boyd, who was named America First Credit Union USU Student Athlete of the Week, led the team with 13 kills. Sophomore outside hitter Tatum Stahl also hit double digits with kills just like that one. The Aggies won three sets to one. Now, I know that you guys might have missed watching Utah State on the football field this week, but it gave us a good chance to catch up with USU alum playing in the NFL, including an Aggie matchup between Chicago and Las Vegas. Our first Aggie over here is number 48, Patrick Scales. He is on special teams for his sixth season with the Bears. Now over here, we've got our second Aggie. He's coming up. Uh, Daniel Levitt, he's number 32, 
for the Las Vegas Raiders. He's in his fourth season and he's also on special teams. Now, how did this matchup go? Well, let's take a look. We've got big red star for Patrick Scales over here. Congratulations, Chicago beat Las Vegas 20 to nine. But don't worry, Levitt, we're still proud of all of our Utah State players. You're all caught up on Aggie Sports. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Emma. That's true. We really do love seeing all of our Aggies go pro. But thank you so much for joining us on this edition of ATV News. I am so sorry. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Well, yep. You may have only seen this sport in the movies, but USU brings it from the screen to the field. Yvonne Bass is actually going to show us the sport that includes snitches and sometimes stitches. We'll count that. That's one. This is Quidditch. According to the U.S. Quidditch organization, it is a mixed-gender, full-contact sport that is inspired by the Harry Potter novels. Player Rob Lee says that it is much more physical than people would think. I ended up getting hurt playing this more than I ever did playing lacrosse. A couple of college kids in Vermont founded Quidditch in 2005. It is now an international major league sport. We're a good team and it's a, you know, it's a sport that we're proud to play. In this unique sport, this isn't a volleyball, this isn't a dodgeball, and this is not a PVC pipe. In fact, they're called a bludger, a quaffle, and a broom. This broom acts as the handicap for the game, like no hands is for soccer and dribbling is for basketball. Well, I better not drop it. I'm going to go play. U.S. Quidditch organization says it is for anyone from sports lovers to book lovers and everything in between. The community takes pride in being inclusive and welcoming to all. Just open, really fun. Like when we go and play other tournaments at other universities, we stay with the teams there. It's just a really close, tight-knit community. They're open to everyone, including you. If you see us, feel free to come out and try. We're more than happy to get to show people how to play the sport. Yvonne Bass, ATV News. Well, that's great. It's fun seeing Quidditch. They're playing nationally. And that's pretty cool. Um, thank you for joining us on this edition of ATV News. And we'd like to apologize. We showed you guys a little bit of a puppy story that we didn't have the time to share today, but you can catch that next week. We'll leave you with some more parts of the Jalen Moore speech on mental health. Have a great week, Aggies. I always tell people, I've played basketball, I've broken my nose twice, both times my dad's like, you're fine, go out there and play, you know, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to play because he says I'm fine, right? Now I'm at a point where in my life I'm actually not okay. I don't feel like me. Um, how do I explain this to my dad when, as a kid, we have conversation, we would sit down and watch hours of basketball, NBA. I want to do that, dad, you know, like that's what I'm telling him, I want to play in the NBA, that's my goal. And now I've achieved it, I signed a contract, and now I physically, mentally, emotionally can't do it because I just am not myself. I don't know what's going on. How, how am I going to go about this and tell him? And that's what I talked about my brother with for, for that long. And so, you know, I finally go up there and I'm like, hey, you know what, Dad? Like, let's go in the living room. Let's have a talk. Mom, come here too. Let's, we got to have a family talk, you know? I go in there, I sit down, and like I said, I actually broke down to them because like this is a lifelong goal that I wanted to achieve and I had finally done it and I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. And I told them my whole story, everything that's been happening. And uh, I think they had a little bit of a hard thing, at hard, hard time, you know, understanding what I was going through. And my dad looks at me and he goes, okay, but you're supposed to be in Milwaukee in a week, you know? And I'm like, no, like I don't, I physically don't think I can go. Like, and that more, we had to, it took us all day to, and I had to have a conversation with my dad and tell him what I was truly feeling. And uh, I think towards the end, he, he kind of figured out, once I told him like, hey, this is not anything physical, right? It has taken a toll on me physically now because I'm emotionally drained and mentally drained. And I don't feel like myself and I need help. And I think when I finally told my dad that is when he was like, oh, this is, this is more serious than just some type of injury. Like this is, he actually needs.